Good morning, all. Welcome to the uh, Tourism Committee meeting, October 2nd. Uh, I need a motion to approve the minutes of August 21st, 2018. Ms. Frazier, Mr. Dickinson, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed. All right, Joe, and you want to just move into your resolutions? Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. A couple of business <coughs> resolutions this morning. Uh, the first is to print our 2019 travel guide. Um, we did go out to bid, and uh, the tab sheet, I didn't print it for distribution here, but it was on the attached agenda um, that was submitted online, if you took a look at that, so that you could see the comparison. Uh, Wallsworth has printed our guide for the last uh, two years, and across the board, they came in as the low bidder this time. Um, so we would choose to do 125,000 copies of the guide, which is 25,000 less than in the last couple of years. We're going to decrease it just a little bit and kind of readjust some of our distribution and um, advertising and you know uh, guides that we mail out, but certainly making sure that they get in the hands of the right people. Um, and we did increase the page size a little bit, um, just adding content to that magazine style format that gives the user um, the experience uh, that they will find when they come to visit us. So we, I would request um, a resolution for 125,000 copies um, with Wallsworth Publishing Company. All right, any questions? Anybody like makes a motion? Mr. Dickinson? Mr. Stroud? Any questions? Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind. Yep. What's the cost per piece? I think that the it's total. about 50 cents per piece okay. per guide. That's, that's fine. Okay. All right, any other Thank questions? You. I'll call that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Uh, the second resolution request is for Tanya Brand to travel to her motor coach and international shows. Her schedule of shows was attached uh, to the resolution request, number of days, um, and the different types of shows, whether it is motor coach or uh, international. So she does start need she needs to start making some of the reservations now for shows that are in January. So would re we would request request that 2019 show schedule and travel be approved now so that she can make those reservations and get the in at the room rates that are a little bit lower or registration rates that are a little bit lower if she pre-registers. I'll make a motion. Mr. Gary, you made a motion? Okay. Yes, Mr. Driscoll, right? Yes. Yep, I'll second it. Any other questions? You know, approximately how many uh, tours we got in? Uh, I have that information downstairs. Um, I can keep a, a running tab. It's still um, paying off. Yeah, I think so. And we, we reevaluate the shows that we go to if we feel we're not getting a good ROI or that we're not talking to the right people. For example, um, National Tour Association, I haven't done that show for three years just because it was kind of on the decline. But I think I need to readdress it okay. and, you but, know. I mean, you're looking at Yeah, definitely. Very good. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passed. Thank right. you. Um, so oh, and yeah, I, I, you have on here on the tourism department budget. I'd like to leave it till the end. Sure. If that's all right with the committee, so we go through our uh, tourism meeting all right, agenda. I'll just go through our. And then we'll go over the budget. Okay. A little bit of an overview of uh, what's going on. So just our, you know, from month to month, I try to give you some of the key performance indicators. Um, and I do send out the SPR reports every month to the committee. So you have seen the July demand and the August demand have been up um, year to date. We're still up 5%. Uh, there was a question that would have been a pending item carried over from last month. Supervisor Wiles had asked about uh, the inventory of rooms. So that would be the supply. So looking at supply and demand, uh, I just broke out to you the July and August. And then I have uh, 2017, the year as a whole, if you want to see how many rooms there are. And, and certainly this is the properties that subscribe to the SPR uh, program. So it's not each and every property, but approximately 2 million rooms over the course of the year in supply. 
and approaching 100 million in demand. Uh, in this last STR um, message that I sent to the committee, I had a five-year comparison that was a wealth of information. Uh, if you take some time to look at it and you'd like to look back at, um, I think it was from 2013, 14 through 18. So you can see how the ADR uh, has been pretty much the same over the last couple of years. You know, a dollar here or there, sometimes it's a few cents up and down. Um, the supply has increased. 2016, 17, 18, as a few new hotels have come on board. Um, so when you look at the occupancy, that is, you know, there's an equation there of the new supply, uh, the increased demand, and, and that's why we like to look at the demand, the actual number of rooms sold, and it has increased over the last five years. If we, let me look at my notes here, I believe that it was 2008 was the last year we exceeded demand of one million rooms. And if we stay on track right now, we've had a pretty good summer, we should exceed one million rooms in 2018. So that would be, you know, kind of in the back of our minds, that would be a good goal to achieve. So, you know, it hasn't happened since, you know, the economic crash. So for us to come back to and uh, gain that room demand back, that would be a good measurement. So if you haven't had a few minutes to look at that five-year chart, <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, due to all of us working together, um, I, I, you know, I have it with me and I've highlighted, I, I'm sorry that I can't share it with, um, with everyone, but I tried to highlight a couple of columns and come across to the totals at the end of the year so that at a glance it would make it a little bit easier for you to read. So if anyone has specific questions about that, supervisors, please come down to the office. I'm happy to open it up and I even have 2003 all the way down to 18, so I can share that with you. Julian. Yes, sir. Uh, I did get your email. It's very interesting, uh, and I, I appreciate it sending it out. I have a, a quick question. When you say supply inventory, 212,000 uh, rooms, are those rooms that are registered with the STAR report, or are those rooms in the county? So there are three different numbers. There are the properties that pay for the subscription with STAR. Right. STAR also takes into consideration some of the other larger properties that are in the area. Um, and I can see that it's one of the tabs on the report that we receive each month. So there might be, oh, I need to open up my, let's see. All right, so I will say in August of this year, um, there are 140 properties in what they call the census. So they're taking into consideration 140 properties. Not all 140 properties subscribe. It's a lower number than that. But they're aware that those properties are out there. They know how many rooms they've had. You know, they, they just take that into consideration like an equation or an algorithm to arrive at these figures. Then there's that number of cottages, B&Bs, Airbnbs that there's no measurement in this report for. So they're really three but, different but numbers. But the bulk of the motel rooms in, in Warren County are in there? Probably 50 to 60 percent grant type. The larger branded properties. Yep. So like would you think the Super 8 in Lake George would be in there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. So if I could just follow up on that. Oh, sorry, mm -hmm. Um, what you're saying is instead of 212,000 available rooms, we have 400,000 available files? Um, it would approach that number. Um, I would have to, I don't know that number off of hand, but yeah, that's about, I would say that's 60%. Okay, so, so a little under that. Do we, do we think the occupancy percentage rolls across all the properties the same amount? Well, you could assume that. I mean, uh, that's all I have to go by at this point. I have tried to survey um, all of our properties, smaller ones, and I don't get a very good response. So I don't think it's enough for me to um, to make a, you know, an assumption based on the properties that are not responding. It's been incredibly low. 
when I just manually send out a, a survey to them. So I do rely on this. I don't get it. But then I look at sales tax. Then I look at op tax, which does uh, take into the, those properties into consideration because they have to pay an op tax. And that's increasing. Mr. Driscoll? Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so can I, can I presume, I mm -hmm. guess, that um, with the Treasurer's Office doing more exploration of, of um, rooms, whether they're uh, Airbnbs or, mm -hmm. or um, short-term, uh, I guess it's called, those, those numbers could increase because we're getting that information or? Well, I don't know, I don't think the SPR numbers will increase okay. because those smaller properties are not oh. going to subscribe to that. Uh, and likely not be taken into consideration in that report, but we will get a report from Airbnb. So um, that's a voluntary um, registration that, that uh, uh, larger properties can subscribe to, or yeah, they'll it, pay the fee and, and pay into and they get that benefit uh, membership mm -hmm. benefits that type of thing. I think the larger branded properties, uh, that you know, at the higher corporate rel level, I mean, it's just assumed that. Uh, they're required to do that, and they want to measure themselves. But the smaller properties, you know, maybe it's not that important for them. There's someone who has cottages on the lake, and he knows that he yeah. fills from year to year, and he, it doesn't serve him a benefit. Conover, do you have an answer? Those numbers, I think, we need to distinguish between uh, rooms and room nights. Mm -hmm. So when you say 212,000 in July, you would have to divide that. That's for that's you, if you wanted to find the average daily, you have to divide that number. In other words, that I don't want people to think 212,000 rooms available. That would not be. That's in an entire month. Right. That's in an correct. Entire, so what it is, I I think I, I didn't think about this, but I think <coughs> we'll develop this. We should have no notation that what that actually reflects. Mm -hmm. I think it reflects a total room nights available for the month of July. Correct. That's a different number than the total number of beds available in any one time. And in that um, spreadsheet that I send you every month, there is a tab for daily by, by month. So you will see August 1, August 2, August 3, and you can see how many uh, what the supply is every single individual day and what the demand is every individual day. So, so with, you know, 212 divided by 30. Or so it, would you then take the 212 and divide it by uh, 30 or 31? Correct. Okay, I just want people to see that. that distinguish the, the difference between that and that nice. Mr. Strau. I had a, I was just wondering if the new guy in accounting that is supposed to be keeping track of the um, OCT tax received has done like a mathematical correlation because we could use the algorithm and the advertised bed nights and you have an established 80% occupancy and make the assumption that that generally applies generally. And, and see if the numbers are matching, if there's a correlation there of 0.92 or 0.1, if it's a perfect correlation, but um, that would be an interesting... Um, way to track um, yeah. whether occupancy tax is really covering what we think it should be. Yeah. So I'm just, you know, we can give that, give that task to our new sure. accounting person. <laughs> so I think we did ask um, Mike Swan about that and um, my recollection is that he doesn't track room nights. It's all about dollars. Um, yeah, so but if you have a guesstimate for your room nights, mm -hmm. even those who are not part of the STAR, and apply the algorithm and the, and, and the occupancy and so forth for a given time period, mm -hmm. you should be seeing X number of dollars. Are we seeing something in that general area? I don't really expect a correlation of one. I was just saying, you sure. know, nothing in the world comes out that perfect, but it should be 
in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. You know, the only the answer to something that I would tell you is that it's tough to go by room nights and occupancy because some hotels charge four hundred dollars a night, and some people charge a hundred dollars a night. So yeah. it, it, it's a tough number the, to come up with. Go by the advertised rates. But that was one of the things the auditors brought up was comparing the oxy tax to the sales tax collected by the by the uh, motels or hotels. Because that was another thing that they made mention when they did the audit report. When I sat in on the audit report, one of the things that they were having, they took issues with was the amount of sales tax turned in versus the amount of oxy tax turned in. You know, because the auditors looked at it and said, you know, there should be some correlation. Of course, we pushed back, but we did go do the right thing and hire somebody to audit that. So that's another way of trying to see if the money is being collected properly. Wilder, yeah, I was just going to make a comment that I, I believe I heard earlier in one of the other meetings that we had that the rates are, they fluctuate a lot. So um, I'm actually from day to day. So that may not be such an easy connection unless we get a sense. You know? Well, they, they you know, I'm, t- you t- I'm a room renter. and Not for a given time period. Yeah, but it's it's hard because like I'm a room renter, and if I get two hundred dollars a night, and I got two rooms left for Friday and Saturday, I might put out an email blast to charge one hundred fifty just to get the people in there. So you're losing your sales tax and op tax over that room for me. So can you imagine all the people might do that once in a while? Those are exceptions and not the rule. Yeah. Well. Yeah. All right. Did I see another hand up, Mr. Conover? You would know, for example, that. You, you could have a community in do that, that uh, has uh, 2,400 households, but has a resident population of 2,400. So what that's telling you is that you may have, let's say, eight or nine or a thousand households in a resident household. All of the other households, non-resident households, that at one time perhaps were more seasonal, but now are being rented not all, but a good number are being rented. And I think that what you would find is you can come off, even come off of the uh, census information, uh, the updated census information, to find out how many households are not resident households. And then you would know the, your universe of households that are available, available now, throughout the county. I think it, I think it's surprising. It's, it's all very large. All right, any more on that subject? All right, Joanne, you want to move on? Uh, so just recognizing that it's more than SPR, uh, the sales tax collections, stock tax collections, uh, Airbnb and private rentals that we should have moving forward into 2019, um, campgrounds and day trippers. I did ask, I have a contact at DEC, so at the end of the camping season, I should have a campground number as well. And these uh, sales tax and op tax numbers are August 31. So if the treasurer comes to the op tax meeting, he may have updated figures. Um, all right, a couple of things that are going on on our website just to keep you in that loop. If I can get to that. We do have a new fall landing page. So this is just our home page right now. But um, if we scroll down and click on Discover Fall, that will take you to our fall-specific landing page. And all of our advertising will redirect to this page. And each of the blocks will flip over. So Oktoberfest, zip lining, fall cruises. There are a number of things here that people would specifically want to look for in the fall. And then if you wonder what lake that is. What lake? Um, you know, that's a Jonathan Esper, and I'll have to look back and see. I'm, I'm sorry, I should know that. Um, so let's just scroll down a little bit. There's a fall foliage progression here. Each time, Ellen in our office calls in every week to Isle of New York, but she may call around the county to uh, find out what the foliage, how it's changing and that will be reflected here and then at a, at a glance. So that should change. It usually changes midweek. Today is Tuesday, so maybe Wednesday for the following weekend will be the indicator. 
um, and then just some fall activities, um, you know, things that are still available in the fall months. Um, another thing that I wanted to show you that came up at both the planning and community development meeting as well as at the tourism meeting was the new recreation mapper and we did immediately incorporate that into our website. So if we scroll down here, right on the home page, Warren County Rec Mapper, uh, Eric in our department um, did most of the content on that fall page or put it together and organized it, um, working with that workshop. And also he incorporated the Rec Mapper here. So if we click on that, it'll take you over to our little landing page for Rec Mapper. And then we can further click are not that good and it'll take you to the planning and community development page where you can get to rec mapper so there's a lot of really good information there and hopefully we can um, having a little bit additional resources in the planning department get that out there to folks that there are some really um, wonderful hiking biking uh, and parks and trails in the area um, Joanne I Ron has yeah. Dennis just asked the same. <laughs> you know what? Is there anyone in the room that knows? I know. I was going to say, does anybody in the room know? All right, as soon as I'm done, I'm going to okay, walk down and find out. Um, I'll just show you one more thing on uh, the Rec Mapper on our recreation page specifically. Um, as you scroll down, look over on the left-hand side, boom, the Rec Mapper comes in. So if you click there, it'll take you back over. And that's on a couple of different locations, um, pages that where it would be likely that people would be looking for something like that. So we've tried to integrate it a couple of different ways. All right, now I need to get out of this. Just show you how, Mr. Chairman, how, how viral this got someone that was uh, hiking the, uh, who shall remain nameless, was hiking the uh, uh, Pole Hill uh, a few weeks back, uh, saw some bear cubs. Mm -hmm. uh, up in a tree and posted it. I think it was on Facebook or one, one, one of the posts. And then, of course, that goes viral. Of course, mm -hmm. Can't, can't even keep there. up with where it goes. Uh -huh. The easy part was getting the cups up in the tree. The difficult part was keep making it stay there. <laughs> 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 so. well, mother must have been around somebody. Yeah, yeah that's what you got to worry about. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Just a little, couple little updates on our social media because we do, you know, focus a lot on our current events. Um, our Instagram is up to 10,000. That was one of our goals, and our uh, Facebook is where we promote our local events. So whether it's the garage sale this fall, the Oktoberfest, the balloon fest, the car show, all of those always perform very well and have. You know, I have a couple little numbers down here. You know, 2,500 shares on the Adirondack Nationals. That's just crazy. Uh, garage sale, same thing, 1,500 shares. So that's our, you know, up to the minute, the way we're getting the word out. Um, and just to give you a heads up that our annual tourism uh, conference will be right here in the Glen Falls Lake George area, working together with the Lake Church CDB and Amy down in the city of Glen Falls. We'll have the folks over at the Great Escape Lodge on Friday night. We get them downtown and they're moving around town to a couple of uh, venues down there because it's such a walkable destination. And then we offer them cruises on the lake or Fright Fest um, and a couple of uh, complimentary attractions. So while these um, PPAs and representatives from around the state are at this meeting, they can experience our area. And I think that might be all I have, and that next slide belongs to Tanya. Good. All right. All right. Um, okay, go ahead. These two things that I'm going to talk about aren't motor coach related, but I'm wearing a lot of different hats lately. Um, for those of you that don't know the New York uh, State Haunted History Trail, it's been going on for about four years now. We've been partners since its inception. Um, basically, the trail just connects the dots for travelers that want to experience haunted or cre creepy type attractions, hotels, things like that. 
Um, so we, 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 well, we, we, it's really, really popular. So um, it's really grown. They did a little market research and forwarded that to the partners. So I'm just going to read some of the summaries. The overall visitor satisfaction is really high. Um, attendance has been up from 2015 to 16. Repeat visitation is good. It uh, promotes year-round visitation. Overall spending per travel party is really strong. Spending per party is about $740 on, a, on just a day trip alone. Um, and the opportunity for growth is still good. So originally we only had the Fort William Henry um, haunted tours that they do. We now have the Sagmore Resort, which they have some haunted happenings there, which we tried for a couple of years to get them on, so we were happy that they joined up. Bark Eater Chocolates and the Mystery Spot of Lake George is on there. Um, so we kind of took advantage, and um, Joanne can talk a little bit more about it, um, of the popularity of the haunted by putting it on that fall page. I'm not sure if you saw that there was mystery and um, haunted happening. One of the rollovers on the fall yeah. page. So we did a little blog on that, and that kind of covers some of these attractions. So we kind of took advantage of our partnership there. Um, next is just a follow-up to the TBEX um, travel blogger exchange that we attended in uh, September. We did a five-day fam tour to follow up with that with uh, five bloggers that did the Go North itinerary. Um, so they kind of represented um, a lot of international bloggers. Um, that was the goal. Um, Break the Ice Media was the one that facilitated the, the fam tour. So um, we had participants from Nigeria. One was from Nigeria, one was from Toronto, Texas, Australia, and Italy. Um, so they, in return for coming up to the FAM and getting complimentary tours, they had to deliver um, social media uh, deliverables. They had to post. Well, there are they're different ages. Um, the younger ones tended to post immediately while they were traveling, um, and the older folks um, their deliverables will be blogs that they will do after the fact. So we'll just make sure that we get all of the things that they promised. Um, but we did Prospect Mountain. We went out on the Saint for, uh, for a lunch. Um, went to Martha's Dandy Cream. Um, Amy helped me quite a bit in the city of Glens Falls. We did a little tour down there. Had dinner. Um, they stayed at the Queensbury Hotel. Um, so they were very satisfied with, with the uh, tour. And uh, again, I'm doing a lot more with social media influencers. So. Um, you'll hear a little bit more about that, um, I'm sure. Um, when we came back from TBEX, we got a nice pool of um, local bloggers that Joanne and I will go through and um, ha continue to have future relationships with them with the British Start Small and use the local bloggers first. So, Tanya's been wearing a lot of hats lately. Yeah. So <laughs> she, water coach, you know, as some of these new uh, things emerge in the world of social media, um, she's been quick to, to pick up on that. And, and I also wanted to thank mayor, the mayor for uh, showing up and saying hi. And Amy's always a great partner when it comes to fam tours and things like this. So thanks, Amy. Group hug. <laughs> Group hug. <laughs> Any other questions of Tanya? Tanya? Sorry. My niece is Tanya. Oh, I didn't know her. All right. Um, we're going to move now. I, I, I'll open the privilege to the floor. Anybody has questions about what we've done now? And then we'll open the floor again about going over the budget, I guess. I, I want to commend the staff for the website. It's beautiful. It's really exciting. Good job. Thank you. And I'm the sure last that. comment I'll make, uh, I thought the treasurer would be here. Probably going to come to our tax, but I'll steal his thunder. I mean, the uh, sales tax, according to what he's got here, is a million seven hundred and eight thousand above last year. And I, I know I keep a good track of that stuff. And our ta uh, sales tax has been going up a little over a million dollars a year for the last six years. This is already a million and three quarters almost. And um, the occupancy tax, just uh, 229,000, a quarter of a million dollars over last year. So something's going on. It's a 15.3% increase. And the sales tax is 5.1. But I think the treasurer might even tell you that later. All right, moving to the, your, your budget now. You want to go on? So I'm, I'm going to ask Lisa to kind of run through the line by line with you. Basically, our budget is very much the same as last year. Um, when we went into 2018, we had an adopted budget, and then after the fact, it was amended, and uh, approximately 200,000 was uh, removed from our budget, and it was used to fund uh, the CDB. So our request this year was would be to uh, put that $200,000 back into our budget 
and largely that amount came out of our contract with Advertisers Workshop, which is promotion, digital, social media, and broadcast. And really that's what we're all about. We're about promotion. We need to get the word out. Uh, so that would be um, the money that's going back in the budget. We're doing a little less print. We're doing a little more digital and social. Um, we're doing some of the social media in-house, so we you know, saved some money there on the um, contract with Trampoline. We have a little bit less in postage. You know, so there's just a little up and down, but basically it's the 200000 that would be the difference from the previous year. So Lisa can certainly answer the line by line, oh, and certainly me, as we go through the budget. She's done a nice comparison of one year to the next and the difference. So in 2018, we actually split the total budget, um, which uh, into two, two uh, subgroups. One was for the department, the other for uh, occupancy tax or special events and, and other things that happen in the tourism realm outside of our department. So uh, when we, the uh, IT did our summary sheet, you'll see in the back there's, there's a combined um, summary sheet for actually 2017 and I attached the 2017 budget performance because when they split the codes, uh, that did not come forward um, on, onto the separate codes. That's the last three pages in that budget pack packet are 2017. So as um, Joanne mentioned, um, our original 2018 request for the department uh, was 2,407,147 2, with the increases in uh, salaries for the exempt people and a um, little uh, credit on the employee benefits. Uh, the revised amount was $2,412,045. As she mentioned, 200000 uh, was transferred to the occupancy side of the house. Uh, if you see the difference on the uh, one spreadsheet there that I gave you after the uh, sheet. sheet, sheet number two, uh, the actual difference was because of um, a purchase order that that was that was transferred from 2017 into 18. That's what that soft close is there. So we, we, we transferred money around in the budget to make up that $200,000. And um, so that takes into account uh, where we ended up with the purchase order. So um, basically when you look at the 2019 budget, which is $2,460,000 uh, compared to the amended after the 200000 was taken out, uh, the difference is 193,662, which is just under the 200,000 that we transferred out. And as Joanne already mentioned, um, uh, really the difference is in our promotion code. So we're doing less print. Uh, we're putting the $200,000 back into the Ad Workshop um, contract. They do TV for us as well as social media, and then we also have uh, do a lot of in-house Facebook and social media and the things like that. And then I've also attached a separate um, spreadsheet which goes line by line showing the differences. We've, uh, and some transferring around within the budget. Uh, so those are the basically the 400 codes on the bottom there. <coughs> We're doing some different things with contracts, which is 0.470. We no longer have uh, a social media contract. We're doing a lot of that in-house. We've also taken on a, a social 
some small freelancers uh, to do some photography, photography for us, and also writers. Um, so that would be the difference of the uh, between the contract code and and basically the promotion code. Wow. And this is the first time we've looked at it really closely. Postage is um, almost 102,000 down. Mm -hmm. And we're doing more digital. Mm -hmm. um, I would expect that would go down. And is there any opportunities for us to be able to take a chunk out of postage? We're watching that uh, very closely. And if we don't spend the money that's in postage, it will stay in the uh, postage account and we can roll it over to the following year so we don't necessarily <coughs> spend it all. When we do mail out our guides, um, we usually send them pre-sourced. So we do the work in-house to, you know, some of the work ahead of time for the post office so we get a discounted rate there and not as many are, are going out uh, first class. Do we send but them we based on requests? Uh, yes. Okay, so it's based on it per is. request. We have some advertising that, you know, click here to receive a travel guide. Some of our digital ads that are, are out, you know, click here. It'll take you to our landing page, fill out your name and address. Once in a while we get phone calls, not so much of that. But it is based on specific requests for a, a guide. Just to follow up, could we, instead of having them, if they request a travel guide, see if they want it in PDF format, save us some money? Because I know a lot of the kids are just mm -hmm. doing stuff electronically and they take their iPads with them and away they go. So I don't, I'm not sure if we can yep. save any money with that, but it sounds like a pretty simple flake thing. And on the other hand, is there a market for us? So we've taken that into consideration. We have a PDF of the guys. Um, but can you get everything that you need on our website? So the travel guide is the piece that people want in their hands, and they want to pick it up. So there's a market for that. And then there's a market for, I don't really need that guide, and it'll take me forever to go through 90 pages of a PDF and I can get it from the website. So, I, I mean, the PDF is available. We could offer that. The, the guide is 90 pages? Yes. Uh, it's 88 right now. And on the motor coach side of things, we um, we didn't do the group travel planner, which um, with a travel guide is somewhere around $3 to mail out. Uh, we did a folder this year. So it's a lighter weight. It's specifically for itineraries. It's about this big. I'll show it to you uh, next month, so we'll save a little bit on the motor coach side of the mailings as well. So, Mr. Strong, the, uh, <coughs> the 200000 that we took out of your budget and transferred to the CBB. So how are we going to pay for the CBB this year? Is that conversation coming up? Yeah, it's coming up at the Octax. All right, but it's not going to come out of uh, no this year. All right. So, and then you're going to use that money to do more promotion still. Correct. And you guys have done a fantastic job. I mean, the numbers are are there, and you can't deny that. So, Thank you. Yeah. You, know, you know, it's a, we're all working together, but yeah, um, group hug. <laughs> we need group hug. Um, I, I would like to think maybe at the next meeting we, ha we would have that workshop come in and, you know, you hear from me a little bit and I look at Google Analytics, but they are placing our digital ads. So it's more than just social media. There's digital, anytime you're scrolling on your phone, I could be at home. Um, they, they don't typically target me because I am here, but occasionally I'll see one of our ads pop up. So anytime you're online, um, one of our ads could pop up that will redirect you to our website or in, in this case right now to our fall page. So all of that digital advertising redirects people to our website yeah. and television and social media. Yeah, really sure. Yeah. Thank you. Joanne, um, in the last couple of weeks there's been a move afoot to talk about getting rid of plastic bags. You and I spoke briefly about uh, maybe do some a uh, reusable bag handout or something like that that we could use. Uh, also along the same lines, is there any leverage that we can get in terms of promotion that says we're so concerned about the environment we're getting rid of plastic bags? Is there any any leverage that we might be able to gain from that? We could make a PR push to let people know that we're doing that. Um, we have looked into, to, again, Tanya kind of picked up on that. 
um, and Supervisor Bramer has mentioned it. And there are different uh, types of bags out there. So do you really want a sturdy grocery store type of bag where you can have uh, quite a lot of you know, material in a guide? Or do you just need something that you're going to slide a travel guide and you know, a little, some kind of a tchotchke in there? So we've got a range of less than a dollar a bag up to five dollars a bag. Um, we have in the past made our poly bags avail available to our businesses. Um, we could do that on a limited basis and share that with them. Uh, you know, positive, get the word out to um, our local businesses that we're doing that. And maybe they could put some, you know, little goodie bags for their guests. Or, I mean, there are a number of things that we could uh, look at to get yeah, the positive word out. Yeah, I was more along the lines of those reusable shopping bags, you know, mm -hmm. the polypropylene or whatever they are that says visit the Lake George area. We handed out for the first, I don't know, 100,000 people that come in, promotion, sure. you know, or 10,000 every month or whatever, but mm -hmm. hand it out and they take it back with them mm -hmm. and they're downstate, they're going to the grocery right. store and it says visit Lake George when they're right, walking right. in. Perhaps at our new welcome center. Just a thought. Mm -hmm. Good idea. We do distribute some of our poly bags right now uh, at the Thruway Information <coughs> Center. So it could be that kind of a thing where it was, you know, maybe if someone was having a conversation they could pass them out because the cost would be a little bit more. But that would certainly get them into the hands of the traveling public and, and get the word out there. So we need to look at the different types of bags and what is the purpose. Do we want to spend 99 cents or five dollars on you know different types of bags? We have two vendors that were that were uh, I think Claudia re recommended. I think they're local. They're both local, but um, Promotions Plus and <coughs> the other one, um, Bill Chase. I yeah, I've, I've bought some myself without mm -hmm. the wording on it because I'm cheap, right? But. Mm -hmm. I would think that you could get them for a dollar a bag at certain quantities of them. Yeah, less. even a little under. Right. Yep. So it just depends on whether or not that's something that we should put into the mix as we're going forward is not just advertising for us, but mm -hmm. also kind of set the stage mm -hmm. uh, if we're successful moving forward with the bag bag. Yeah. Oh, we definitely plan to move in that direction. You know, again, we have some quotes and um, I would like to use, I have a couple of dollars that I could use in 2018 funds, so I'd like to, maybe we could bring them back to the committee or share them with you to see what's out there. There we go, that's one. So that's a little heavy canvas. Mm -hmm. This is Amy. Yep. So that was uh, $4.45. Mm -hmm. What quantity? Uh, should have brought that green one up. Hi. A little bit with a reusable well, shopping bag. Well, obviously, right? we at a county level will probably be buying a higher quantity. So <laughs> 435 probably. And and Kim, uh, Ron, Ron, Ron has and, uh, all right. Ron has his hand up for a while. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm pretty. We also looked at uh, biodegradable compostable bags. Mm -hmm. I was out searching the other night and I saw about uh, lots of 500. They're about three cents in the ask. It's a lot more than 500. You can drive it down three cents. Uh, so you also have compostable clothing. Again, it's all biodegradable bags. Um, now they have different types. So, you know, you might, for example, on the farm, you can have some kind of beer or So I think that uh, the ask round and compostable bags are running for the biodegradable bags. burgeoning industry in that as well. They offer all kinds. All right, any other comments, suggestions? All right, motion to adjourn. The Dixon said. Gary, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.